welcome to the MBS Show, episode number 45. I'm your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Daniel Anthony. Hi, Norman. It's great to be back. Hi, Daniel. How are you? I've been okay. I'm turning 21 in approximately one hour and 20 minutes. Wow, congratulations. Yep, thanks. So, 21, what does that mean? Oh, well, it means that I'm not a kid anymore. Awesome, awesome. Can't run around shouting I love ponies unless, well... I'm still going to do it anyway. <laughs> uh, but you'll get strange looks from the people around you. Not until they look at my IC. <laughs> uh, still the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've been doing that. I'm going to continue doing it. <laughs> <laughs> There's no stopping you, eh? Nope. Okay. So, as you might have guessed, this week we don't have a guess. <laughs> Did I just say guess and guess at the same time? Yeah. Nope. <laughs> Unintended. <laughs> I'm terrible. So anyway... No, we picked this up from Final Draft. Oh, God. It's his no. fault. Oh, God, no. Anyway, um, there's no guest this week, so we're still gonna push on. <laughs> so anyway, in housekeeping, it's been almost a year since we started the show, and we have talked to a lot of awesome guests. To celebrate our first year anniversary, we are planning to throw our first MBS show meetup. What do we have? What will we do? Well, we're not sure. We're still in the planning phase, but stay tuned to find out more. Do you know what to do for our very first anniversary? I'm still struggling about what I'm going to do for my 21st birthday, but yeah, I'm definitely up for some stuff. We've got some things in store right now, planning it out nice and slow because, um, well, we have kind of, well, not really a lot of time on us, but we're working things out and we will let you know on this show as soon as something's on the ground. And we can tell you it's going to be awesome. I hope so. So, um, when is our first year anniversary? Our first episode was recorded on the 26th of February, 2012. So, that means we are just about, you know, 31 plus 5. No, 31 minus 5. My math sucks. We're, less than, we're, less, we're almost just about more than a month away. Awesome. So, almost a month away from our very first year anniversary. That's awesome. Yep. That's awesome. Well, Norman had the idea for a long time, you want to count the first year anniversary of our inception, that's a different story, but oh, God, the first no. anniversary of our episode, yep, that's the 26th of February. So mark your calendars and get ready for it. Yay! Might do something special for our international listeners too, since they can't come and join our meetup, unless they're going to take a plane and come to us, which will be awesome. Yep. And then, why don't you take the next one? Alright, and to make things even more awesome, our Facebook page just hit 100 likes. So thank you to all our loyal listeners and all our subscribers and all of you who press like on that page. You all deserve cupcakes. Thank you so much for your loyalty. Yay, we got 100 listeners. Oh, so awesome. I would never imagine that we would hit 100 likes on our Facebook page. Neither did I, and back in the day, you know... One year ago, it's been so long already. I can't believe it. It's 2013, and this is the first episode of the year. And it's like, one year ago, if you told me, hey, Daniel, you know, one day we'll be on a podcast that has 100 likes on Facebook, I'll be like, get out of here. And not to forget, we 82 subscribers on YouTube. <laughs> oh, yep. boy, 82 subscribers. My, my personal YouTube channel only has one. <laughs> <laughs> I've only got about 30 on my channel, and on our iTunes, we have 30 subscribers as well. Wow. Uh, if you count that all in, how much? How many subscribers and likes do we have? One hundred and twelve subscribers. Well, yeah, throw it on Facebook and let's just feel good. We have two hundred and twelve people who like us. Yay! <laughs> anyway, moving on to our next topic is news time, and in today's news time, the season three finale and its writer. Ooh. According to Megan McCartney, the season three finale is going to be a one-part episode. The writer for the episode is going to be M.A. Larson. His previous works on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, are Swarm of the Century, Sonic Rainboom, The Cutie Mark Chronicles, The Return of Harmony Part 1 and 2, Luna Eclipse, Secret of My Excess, The Super Speedy... The Super Speedy Cider... Ah, the Super Speedy Cider 6000. Man, that's a tongue twister episode. It's About Time, Ponyville Confidential, and Magic Duel. Links can be found in the show notes. So then, season yep. three finale, one part. You know, when you first said season three finale, I'm like, no, 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 spoilers, but one part. Looking at the way they've done this season, it's been like, 
you know, they managed to cram a lot of things into one episode. It may make the episode seem a little bit more rushed, but, you know, I have a feeling that this kind of finale is going to be epic and it's going to be like 20 minutes of non-stop action. True, but one Bruce part... Bruce Willis episode. Bruce Willis episode? What do you mean? <laughs> you know, Bruce Willis, like, die-hard kind of movies. It's just non-stop, everything is going on, explosions. I mean, minus the, Dan, minus the Michael Bay kind of stuff. But, you know, think of it as something that's going to be really hype. <laughs> I, I, true, but okay. Um, a one part episode might not be that bad because um, season one we got a one part and that was awesome. Yeah, I love the gala. Yeah, but anyway, um, besides the one part being a downer, um, we got M. A. Larson. Um, M. A. Larson wrote stuff like Sonic Rain Boom, um, The Return of Harmony Part One and Two, Lunar Eclipse, uh, the Super Speedy Cider Squeezy Six Thousand. Um, about it's about time and magic duel. So I mean, um, I think we're safe and in good hands with the season three finale. Definitely, I think season three is going to end with a bang. I mean, thirteen episodes. You know, what if what if what if it's a one parter and then they continue it in season four? Oh God, you're, that's an evil thought. That's an evil thought. How could you say such a thing? It's going to be. You know why? Why? Because of the book. Do you want to know what is in that book? You, you know, know, they're going to do something with that. Book. You know, it's going to be one of those things, like um, Apple Cider from Ronyville said, in the final season of season two, if it was a one-parter and when Twilight got engulfed in flames and we had to wait for season three to know oh, what God. happened next. <laughs> if they did something like that. On the oh. streets if that happened. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, I hope it's nothing like that, man. Oh, me too. I mean... You know, it, it would be interesting, but it'd be keeping us on a hiatus, as long as the hiatus is not longer than two weeks, that'll be fine, but I believe it might be more. <laughs> oh, but but if it's true, my goodness, Hasbro is sure taking a gamble on us. Uh, okay, anyway. Yeah, but I believe a one part will be like that. So, uh, just a little sidetracking, or if you call it a segue, I still don't know what a segue means, but never mind. Uh, what, what would you do in this next hiatus, and how long do you think it's going to last? I got no idea because... Projections, my friend. I don't know, because the thing is, we're we're not sure if we're going to get a season 4. Well, okay, there is going to be a season 4, I think, because we reported it in the news long ago. There was a budget for it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, but the thing is, nothing is set in stone yet. Correct. So it's kind of a big gamble to say they're doing season 4, even though the signs are there. But, okay, so let's rephrase that. How are you going to deal with the absence of ponies? Uh, well, we still got fan-made content and there's still Double comic. Rain Boom. So, the comic as well, right? Yeah, the comic also and the comic too. So, I mean, um, our lack of ponies might not be that bad. We... So, well, I don't need to stock up on ramen and beans. Good. <laughs> yes, yes. And what about you? Me? I actually think, you know, I'm quite confident that there's going to be a season four, but not to jinx it or anything. But of course, uh, this wait, I have no idea how long it's going to be. But if you ask me, it's probably going to be like a couple of months. Because if they make us wait any longer than it is between season two and three, there'll probably be kind of like a decline in the customers. Well, that, that is viewership. true. That, that is true. But if you don't know anything about animation, there's always this um, 65 episode rule where... After 65 episodes, the series end and it starts syndication. Yeah, that rule. And uh, they're re- they've reached 65 with this season, correct? Yes, yes. So yeah, they're going to reach that and like, there's a demand. So are you going to fulfill it? Yeah, I don't know. Like All in or fold, Hasbro. Yeah. Your call. True that. But hey, um, if it's making big bucks, why not keep on going? Because exactly. you're not... I, I don't know. I'm not 100% sure how much you're spending on... Um, making po- new ponies, but if it makes a lot of profit in the long run, why not? And moving on to the next topic. So Dan, why don't you take this one? Yep. Oh, wow. Another award. Check it out. A while back, TV.com did a poll on which animated series of 2012 was the best. And no, we won't be reporting this on the MBS show if the winner wasn't obvious. <laughs> so now the results are in and the winner is the obvious Littlest Pet Shop. I mean, My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic. With 5,092,613 votes. And an honorable mention goes to Avatar, The Legend of Korra, with 578,415 votes. And Young Justice, with 136,409 votes. 
MLP FIM wins by 10 times the amount of second place. Uh, you want to know something? Did you know the voting system on TV.com was broken? Uh, no. Like, you can vote multiple times. Uh, okay, I'll be frank, I didn't vote. No, right. I covered for you and Tash and News <laughs> and Emilio, my mother, my father. <laughs> and everybody else in the world who didn't vote. Go say thanks to Norman. He did a big good job for you. <laughs> but no, seriously, look at the numbers and look at the second best. Yeah, I know. It's like 10 times. It's wow. It's broken. <laughs> That's why. Well, I'm looking to make an over 9,000 joke and I can't. You know, <laughs> it's like... Good lord, that's a lot. It is over 9,000. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's 5 million. No, yeah, but, mean, but okay. it does say something if was, about... If it wasn't broken, then I was going to like say there are 5 million bronies in the world, but now that I know that it's broken, it's like, oh, okay, right. No, but if you do think about it, right, um, our fan base is really dedicated. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we've been cranking up awards for a long, long time, and I think we can really credit it to the... Fan base, unless those are, you know, the awards that are given and are, uh, how do you say, judged by people. Nah. But if you're looking at the kind of statistics like this one, and if I'm not mistaken, the one that was announced last week, the one uh, two weeks ago, was it that one about uh, the top fan- fandoms of the year? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that one was also voted, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, by us. <laughs> yep. I know, I was like, my dad and my brother were watching Walking Dead upstairs, and I'm like, you know, Walking Dead is the third biggest fan base in the world. Like, oh, really? Wow, that's cool. It seems like the biggest thing around. No, no, no. You don't know what the biggest thing is. My you know? little pony. <laughs> you know, Doctor Who? Yeah, Doctor Who. Isn't that show, isn't that show over? You're like, no. <laughs> nope. We're still running. What I can say about this is we have a really good fan base because we're up against, let's see, give me a second... Well, we've already given, uh, you know, this Avatar, The Legend of Korra, Young Justice. And uh, there was another competition I saw. Did this beat Gravity Falls as well in Adventure Time? It's the same thing. Um, let me just list out what's on here. Um, you got My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, The Last... Um, sorry, um... The Incumbent. Avatar, The Last... I'm sorry, I'm not The Last. Avatar, The Legend of Korra, Young Justice, Futurama, Adventure Time, Gravity Falls, Star Wars, The Clone Wars, Soft Park, Bob's Burger... Hey, and Family Guy. <laughs> you know, like everyone can be like, you think you're tough for watching Family Guy? I got well, that's no. nice. I got no idea. <laughs> no, but still, um, like shows like Family Guy, um, Star Wars, Adventure Time, Gravity Falls. I mean, um, they got a lot of votes, but not as many as uh, My Little Pony. And like I said before, the voting system here is broken. <laughs> Well, then it just proves, you know, we've got really, really dedicated fans. Indeed. Anyway, we've been on this topic for a bit too long now. Let's move on to the next topic. Right. And then the next topic is MLP Facts of the Week. <laughs> okay, nice jingle. We need to keep that one. <laughs> okay, um, all of these informative facts can be found at twitter.com slash MLP Facts. So anyway... Did you know Twilight Sparkle was originally named Twilight Twinkle? That's a cute name. TT. <laughs> now, to be honest, right, did, was she renamed just to make fun of Twilight? I The don't... Vampire series? Because the first time I watched MLP and I was like, Twilight Sparkle, I was like, seriously? Did they really name her that? I got I, no I, I idea. Because I'm like, oh god, why did they have to name her Twilight Sparkle? The whole, Twi- the whole Twilight fan base is going to make fun of me now because back then I thought I was the only brony in the world. <laughs> I I don't think so. I mean, Twilight Sparkle and Twilight Twinkle. The, the name Twinkle and Sparkle, Sparkle's much nicer sounding. And Twinkle sounds a bit more kiddy. Yeah, it does. has a cuter tone to it. I mean, she's got the kind of, um, you know, she's not 100% adorable all the time. Yeah, I, I think it's because of Lauren Faust testing out the character's voices when she asks... Tara Strong to voice some of the characters ah, before yes. during test production. I mean, you can you can say, nah, my name is Twilight Sparkle. That sounds nicer. Yeah, it does. Yeah, my I, name I is Twilight know. Twinkle. G3. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Anyway, moving on. Oh, funny enough that you mentioned G3. Did you know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Did you know Katie Westerluck, the voice for Spike in Generation 4, 
What's the voice for Rarity in Generation 3? Princess Rarity. <laughs> oh god. Who knew? Okay, we have Spike who is super organized, kind of assistant to super organized pony. And in G3, she was a pony that couldn't even take care of a magic wand. Right. <laughs> what a change. <laughs> yeah. Voice actors these days, I don't know how they can play bipolar characters without being bipolar themselves. <laughs> who said they aren't? <laughs> Anyway, moving on to the last one. Did you know the lyrics for the theme song were written by Lauren Faust? Okay, no. I thought it was Daniel Ingram. He wrote... In, I know, I thought, I know. I thought he wrote both. No, he wrote the melody for it, like the revamp melody. The lyric was done by Lauren Faust. Right. Why do I learn so much now? It's, podcasting's a good job. Well, those were MLP Facts of the Week. And it's more fun than college. <laughs> uh, yeah, but it won't get you any money. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, all of these informative facts can be found at twitter.com slash mlpfacts. So let's move on to the next topic. And since we don't have a guest, it's topic time. On this week's episode of the MBS show, we don't have a guest, so we have topic time instead. So this week's topic time, we'll discuss does fan-made content affect the way we think of a character? So to be clear on this, um, for example, is Luna. We all love Luna, but why do we love Luna? I mean, we don't have a straight answer out there from our previous guests who said they love Luna. So, for example, why do you like Luna? Well, I like Luna because of Gamer Luna. Or I like Luna because of Moonstuck, that uh, Wuna thing. And there's a lot more. There's a lot more examples out there. Like, why do you like Sweetie Belle? Well, because she's Sweetie Bot from Friendship with Switchcraft. Switchcraft, yes. Friendship with Switchcraft. So, I mean, those are the examples that I'm um, seeing. So, I guess I'll go first then. So, All right. So, like I discussed before, um, it's about the fan content that make me enjoy certain characters even more. So, example is um, Vinyl and Octavia. We don't see them much on the show besides... A few appearances in some episodes, but we don't see them together. So why are they together in the fandom? Because fanfic writers, artists like to pair them up together. They make a cute couple, I guess. Yeah, so sometimes I just wonder where these people get these random ideas to ship. Not really ship, but put them together. It's like I think they've got this big like slot machine in the room with all the ponies' names on it. Then they just go, "Who should I ship today?" Cha-ching! <laughs> they see, okay, time to ship. <laughs> yeah, could be that. But anyway, um, the reason why I chose Vinyl and Octavia as my first discussion point is because I just finished reading two fanfics. Um, the first is Mission Implausible, and the second is You Only Live Twice. Those were two fanfics written by John Perry. So in this situation here, or the way he wrote Vinyl and Octavia... He wrote them as spies for the government, like James Bond kind of stuff. The Celestia or, government. It's more or less of the Royal Secret Service kind of deal. Aha. Uh-huh. Yeah. So basically, it's kind of a spy thriller action adventure kind of story. So um, I like Octavia and Vinyl in this story because they're kind of spies and is really exciting and I don't see them being shipped that much like as in lovey-dovey kind of ships. It's just like put uh, together in a situation where they have to work together to complete a mission. You see, it's hard to put it like uh, how regular shows do it because in most of these fan... Excuse me, not fan fics. Um, action <laughs> movies like James Bond, there's always a Bond girl. There needs to be somebody there. So if you take, like, some pony who's going to be classy, like, Octavia is one heck of a classy pony. You know, the type of pony who will be seen maybe as a Bond girl, really. That, these two are, like... I mean, Vinyl's a bit too cuckoo for that, but yeah. It's still, it's still quite a nice, interesting pair to put it together. You know how they like to make comedy action movies by pairing two people that are completely incompatible and sending them on some top-secret, urgent mission that if it fails, the whole country goes into chaos? Yeah, I mean... That's why that's why I like it because the story here is really interesting and it shows a different side of Vinyl and Octavia and I don't know after reading this I kind of enjoy Vinyl and Octavia a bit more. 
So what? Like epic work time. <laughs> yeah, epic work time. Well, epic work time was good, but um, I enjoyed this one a bit more than work time. Okay. So what would your example be? What character do you like more that's been brought up by the fans? Okay, if you and if anyone's been like paying a, paying close attention to the episode, the Cutie Mark Chronicles. Oh no, sorry, Call of the Cutie, which was the first ever episode of MLP that I watched. There's this little blue pony in Sugar Cube Corner with a really really sharp horn popping balloons over there, and like uh, he's just on there for three seconds, and uh, po- his name is Pokey Pierce, as given to him by the fans. Now. I didn't pay much attention to him until I realized that, okay, he's actually kind of cute and stuff like that. You know, he has nice nice mane and stuff. And this was before I watched any episode featuring Blue Blood. I mean, there was only one featuring Blue Blood, but still, it was before I watched any of that. He had that look. And then on EQD, I was browsing through one day, and there was this eight-part fanfic written about him leading up to those three seconds of screen time. It's about, I think, 10,000 words, the truth about Pokey Pierce, written about him. And it totally just gives a hell of a justification for a unicorn sitting in the corner of a bakery popping balloons. <laughs> it's like, you know, they said he had a child history, don't know where his parents went. He has ADHD and things like that. I won't spoil it for any of you who want to read it. But, you know, nowadays, every time I look at him, it's like, oh, the poor ADHD pony. <laughs> But I sympathize with him because, you know, I have friends with ADHD and I love people who have ADHD. No no offense, but, you know, they're fun in a way. Not that I like to make fun of them. It's, I laugh with them, not at them. Okay. But it made, it made, it got me really, you know, uh, thinking about how the fan base develops such <laughs> characters. Like, on the Twitter Ponies roleplay, which we had one of our previous guests talk about, I play Pokey Pierce. And the story that I'm building about him is that he is the ADHD type. Is that if you talk to him for about more than five minutes, you ask you, what are we talking about again? Really, though? No. Yeah, I'll be like, you know, he said, um, hey, you want to go to the cafe? Yeah, sure, just let me go upstairs and get my bag. He's like, come down. So where are we going again? Awesome. Once the door open. <laughs> or stuff like that, you know. It's like, you keep, it's like, not really short-term memory loss, but you lose attention and stuff fast. So, you know, it's something like I get to experiment a lot with this. And... Role-playing is something also very prominent in the community. People like to, you know, just take on the name of a pony and start role-playing. And I did it on MLP forums that was owned by Feldo. And that was really, really fun. Uh, Norman, have you tried role-playing? Um, I did before, but it was kind of personal between friends kind of deal. Okay, so not the anonymous type where I pick a pony, welcome to the world. No, 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 no. Well, I mean, I've been in public role plays, especially the Twitter ponies. If you can check it out, just go and follow any pony with the prefix MLP underscore on Twitter. Like, just look for MLP underscore Twilight or Pinky, and then you can work from there and find a lot more others. It's a very active community, and what they do is they actually take the characters from the show, and they get into that character and start playing around, you know, interacting around Equestria, have parties and stuff, and, you know, everything is adopted. When Pinky is, like, super depressed, her mane becomes straight. Mm. And stuff like that, and uh, I don't know why, for some reason, Scootaloo and Charlie are sisters in that particular universe. I don't know. Yeah, but for some reason, they are. And there is so there are a lot of roleplay communities around, and when you go in, if you're playing as your own character, then it's a different story. But once you adopt a character from the show, when you learn about their personality, you learn about things that they can do, and especially when ob- you're observing others, you're like, Pinky can bake, I don't know, durian cake or something like that. Yeah, but they, those are kind of, um, well, related to the topics because if you like a certain character because of the fandom, well, that's about it because the fandom built that character up. And my other selection would be Sweetie Belle. Uh, we all know that Sweetie Belle can sing, she's timid, she's kind of... Uh, she cries like Pinky. <laughs> yeah, and, well, she, she's still a youngin. But the thing is, um, I like Sweetie Belle because of this one fanfic called The Sweetie Chronicles. And the story here is... um, Let me read from the synopsis. We are then amazed by the tale of Sweetie Belle as she travels the multiverse in search of her lost mentor and friend, Twilight Sparkle. Who? What? Sounds like some sort of Doctor Who thing going on. Hello. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> I just had that the whole time travel, and you had it, this epic sound. Next thing you know, it's like, Sweet people on the TARDIS. <laughs> <laughs> oh, funny enough, there's an, there's an April Fool's joke involving the TARDIS. 
Okay. So anyway, um, will she find her in post-apocalyptic Equestria? Or maybe in the strange world where every pony is the wrong gender? Or even where a pony claims to be a human? Read as she journeys through very familiar worlds you might have read about if you dare. The fanfic is written by Wonder D and you should go check it out because it's a really good fic. And I like Sweetie Belle here because he wrote her in a believable way where it evolves the character, or not really evolves, but it progressed. Um, sorry, um, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It develops the character even more beyond what the show could do. Yeah, it, that's what basically a lot of the fan base does. Yeah, it's true. And well, I, I'm guessing that we all like certain characters because of what the fans did. So, um, funny enough, this is what I'm trying to say. Um, why do you like certain characters? Is it because of certain stories that involve certain fanfics or certain uh, tumblers or even certain drawings because i think that it's uh the way that you choose your medium i noticed both of your choices especially like vinyl scratch and octavia and now sweetie bell you're basing this off of a lot of fan fiction so i I guess you know your your primary kind of source for your entertainment not really primary but something that you really like to read and get into a lot would be fan fiction like for me I am not patient enough to read, but when you rec- when Norman recommends a fanfic, go read it because it's good. Because I'm reading Third Generation now. Oh, Third Generation! I like that story, but it doesn't yeah. really evolve the main six. It's just I don't know. It's kind of it's a cute, funny story. But uh, those for those that inv- evolve characters, so you know you get to see them develop in their own way. Like I have this really soft spot for Granny Pie after the comic, the story of Granny Pie. I read that twice. I cried twice because it's just. So amazing. And I'm sure that, you know, some of the more well-known ones like My Little Dashy would have definitely changed a lot of people's perspe- perception towards Rainbow Dash. Mm, personally, for me, no, not really. Uh, but I think it would have done it for some others. Yeah, I know, I know. Because it's a very potent fanfic. Although it's like, you know, it's not really that kind of template fanfiction you can pull off, but it has a lot of potential. It's really quite well-written, I would say. But it's and a bit it too formulaic. Um, sorry, um, the word is a bit too formulaic. I thought I thought it was not that actually. You know, it doesn't have that touch to it. I mean, maybe because I don't read much or anything. No, uh, I mean, I don't know. I mean, the way that it's set up, the whole story, it's a bit too formular. Ah, gosh, dang it! Um, that way is it? You mean built from template kind of thing? Yeah, it's a bit too step by step. You, if you ah. read a lot, you know what's going to happen next. And near the ending... I mean, I had someone spoil it for me, but otherwise, it was still worth reading. Yeah, yeah, it's true. It's true. Um, It's still worth a read. But near the ending, it's kind of, yeah, I knew this was going to happen. And I mean, I I, I expected the whole thing, you know, it's like, okay, that's going to happen. But like, I thought, all right, he said, you're going to cry, Daniel. You're going to cry. I'm like, all right, bring it on. It's true, it's true. But let's not not spoil that story for people who want to read it, because... My Little Dashi, even though I say it's a bit too formula-based, go read it. It's, it's, still, it's still a good read. It's still a good read. It's very enjoyable. Yes, true indeed. And also, um, talking about fanfics, there's some legendary ones like um, Past Sins. Yes. That one evolves the character for... Does it evolve Luna or develop Luna even more? Or does it turn a 180 and develops a OC? I think it does both because when you develop an OC, you're not developing on perceptions of characters in the show. You don't see many fans of an OC. Like, you know, I mean, like popular OCs out there, let's just take, um, if you're on DeviantArt, you will know um, the element of creativity. Oh, I forgot what, uh, Daisy Day, Princess Daisy Day. And then if you're if you're a musician, you'll know Mando Pony as a really awesome OC who is even animated into some of his music videos that someone did. The uh, Yeah, Ask the Crusaders, they did a music video for Picture Perfect Pony. And people love that OC, but it doesn't have the impact of a sh- character from the show. So if you develop an OC, well, it's completely fanon. Yeah, true. But no, um, past scenes, from what I can remember, the story was somehow based around Luna, but somehow developed an OC called Nyx. Ah, yes, Nyx. So that's a bit confusing to me because maybe I don't read a lot of... I, mean, I haven't read that one yet, so maybe my next side project is going to read 
uh, is going to be reading that one. I so actually, the the thing is that a lot of people like to write um, fanfics, and when people write fanfics, especially you know, I mean, I haven't written complete fanfic yet, but even when I try to write, I realize that you know you have a story in your head, and you need a particular character. Now, you can't find the complete spectrum of a human character in the series. So what happens is either you take a character that you want and attach it to a background pony, or you pull in a new character of your choice. Mm, true, but I think we're digressing to another topic for another day. But then, I'm saying that you know, um, comparing against like Nix and Luna kind of thing. Yeah, just to justify. I, I I'm not well versed enough to give a full opinion on it, so I'm not gonna touch it because I don't wanna say something wrong and I might regret <laughs> later. No, and anyway, it's digressing to a different topic there. So, let's pull it back. Um, so, besides uh, Pokey Pierce and Granny Pie, what else? Like, you mentioned that my selections of characters that I enjoy are based on fanfics. And you, I think, based on fanfics and comics. Are there any others? Well, um, I would say fanfics as well. But another thing that I can see is going to pretty much affect would be would be the, what do you call those, fan animated movies. I have a feeling that those will have a big impact because it's it's the same medium that ponies are delivered to us, which is, you know, animation. And aside from the comic, that's how we get our pony. So basically, if this kind of things come out, I think it's going to have a very big impact. The next thing, of course, is music. So if you know Pony Phonic, you listen to Lullaby for a Princess, you know, that kind of made me feel, well, Celestia really has a heart. And you know, especially after looking on that and you see so much Trolestia and suddenly you, you hear Lullaby for a Princess, it makes you totally forget about, you know, Trolestia, the character. Mm. It has that impact on me as well. And it took a long time for Lullaby for a Princess to sink into me. And it just hit me one day when I was driving. And I'm like, damn, this song means so much. You know, but, I don't know why it hit me in the car of all places. But, but yeah, still. don't you already love Princess La Celestia? I love Celestia for a lot of reasons, but of course, you know, this is one way that they highlighted it because I thought it's just like, all right, Luna's going to sleep, Celestia singing her a song. Mm. And then now when I hear the lyrics in detail and it starts to, you know, connect in my head and sparks start flying and then I realize, oh, right, right. This song has deeper meaning. I I know it had deep meaning. I didn't know that deep, you know, that kind of thing. It's deeper. (laughs) We must go deeper, yeah. Yeah. No, it's true, it's true. So basically, we can find the things we enjoyed in other mediums too, song, comics, fanfics, even... And I I suppose people will get it through art as well, especially Tumblr Versus. Yeah, I mean, but Tumblr Versus are considered comics, if I'm not right. Like, um, for example, there's... Okay, I don't want to mention it, but you got Gamer Luna from John Joseiko and that other Celestia from John Joseiko too. So, um, how do I put this? Yeah, basically we enjoy certain characters because of those. And for me, I love the CMCs because of us, the CMCs. He does great art. He ask does... Ask the CMC or ask the Crusaders? Sorry, um, ask the Kirima Crusaders. Ah, okay. Yeah, because um, if you do read about the Tumblr blog, ask the CMCs, um, ask the Kirima Crusaders. I, I don't know how you mention it, but it's okay. just that one. Um, he, there was a whole long story about Sweetie Belle, uh, Meeting Slenderman. Ah, okay. Yeah, and like, oh my god, that story is so fun. And Sweetie Belle kind of likes Slenderman? I, I don't know. And also you got Sweetie Belle playing Minecraft. <laughs> oh, okay. I don't know, I mean, th- those, those kind of things, like, make me enjoy more? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it's also like the bridge to our world kind of deal. Especially, like, the Tumblr blog that I really have a soft spot for is Ask Surprise. Mm. I love that Tumblr blog and I, I kept up with it so much my cosplay that I did two years ago was inspired by that blog and that has also done they did a lot of crossovers and our crossovers are something that really sp- makes sparks fly and they did it with uh, Ask the Pie Sisters with Hot Blooded Pinkie Pie and um, many others and so you know you read this and you start expanding and you build your own world because the Pie Sisters have only ever been shown once yes yeah, true and, and they, they were featured as Phillies, so can't really um, do much with that. But they did. They actually did an assumption of their cutie marks. And, you know, one of them is talented in finding gems. The other one is talented in detonation and explosives. <laughs> so we have, like, you know, a perfect deal. There's two of them who are, like, just, you know, 
rock farmers and then there's pinks. So no and wonder uh, it costs like 16000 to clear out a boulder in the game. Yeah, you need to hire them all the way across from, you know, wherever that rock farm is. <laughs> And when they don't have the explosives, you have to use Clyde's pickaxe, you know. Like, tap, tap. And then, he had, he, then you hire Trixie, and then I think the price should go down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, baby, go more expensive. But it's it's what made... The game is another thing, actually, that changed a lot of perspectives. Like, the game was also a bit of a fan and breaker in a way, with names and stuff. Like, Teacher's Pet and Peppermint Twist, new names that just came out. Peppermint Twist? You mean Twist? Yeah, Twist is called Pepper. She's, she's Peppermint Twist in the game. And she's yeah, best but... really anyway. So, you know, uh, it's kind of something that made me... I, I I love Twists very, very much, as you can see. So, how do you say? I like how they put her in that game, even though she's just a little background pony. <laughs> I think she was the pony that got dumped, man. She wasn't a pony that got dumped. She dumped uh, Apple Bloom. Oh, yeah, that's what they all say. <laughs> <laughs> No, but seriously, um, I, I, I think, in a nutshell, um, I guess we can find whatever we like through the medium of anything, I guess, because I like certain characters because of fanfic, Tumblr blog, and a few, I, I wouldn't say songs, but for you, it's going to be songs, fanfic, comics, and even Tumblr blogs. Forever, whatever pony we like, there's always like this parallel universe out, out there that really develops it so much that you know we kind of like understand that as canon mm, true that's why there's canon versus fandom uh, and then as they say like I'm, I'm in mass communication and they teach us this in media classes that if you work in the newspaper for too long especially newspapers that are politically influenced you have to start spinning stories and if you spin stories for too long a lot of reporters experience that they start believing the lies that they write <laughs> Oh, so, you know, I mean, we're not like, writing lies for that matter or anything like that or bent truth for that matter. But eventually, let's just say that you're into the fandom for a long time. You begin to accept such things as, um, you know, that's the character right there. And then when mm-hmm. Fandom Breaker comes in, you're like, wait, what just happened? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. But anyway, um, we asked this question to our Facebook community and... Well, it was a kind of crossover with Twitter. But anyway, we asked our questions to our community. And we, well, SweetieBot received one message from Mr. Anonymous. And Mr. Anonymous say, in my point of view, they do. But not much, actually. I think some bronies take fan-made content a bit seriously. I may be wrong, but I bet that a few would like to see... Pinkie Pie being a murder because of cupcakes, fanfiction, and its animation. Well, understandable, because there's people who have various fetishes out there, and whatever floats your boat, you know. But um, understanding that people take fan-made content a bit seriously, people take fan-made content seriously. That is what that is what makes a fandom. If fan-made content wasn't taken seriously, there wouldn't be a fandom. True, true. But I'm thinking Mr. Anonymous here is saying that it's taken a bit too overboard because like uh, like he said um, there's some people like to see Pinkie Pie being a mass murderer of to, uh, to be honest as I said there's nothing wrong with that because you know whatever floats your boat yeah, but like true. you know you don't have to go out there cosplaying as Pinkie Pie and then killing people that is too much but yeah I, I won't go there that far but no but even like you know it's considered quite to say mature content because it's gore anyway. Yeah, true. I mean, so you know, if you're t- if you start dragging kids into it, then that's a different story. But if yeah. you take if that's what you know you think you like, then, yeah, you know, that's true. That's it's true. But like I said, our our fan community, there's a lot of people, and there's a lot of people with different kind of, um, how would I put this? Different kind it's... of likes and dislikes. And right, there is. from what I remember about the writer for Cupcakes. He's not that bad a person. The reason why he made cupcakes was because at that point, there was no um, gore stories like yeah, that. No stories. So he was kind of the first. And he even said that cupcake was not that good. It isn't, but it got viral. You know, like Gangnam Style. It's not yeah. the best thing out there, but it's viral anyway. Yeah, but from his description of the story, like some of the situations were kind of forced and whatnot. And moving on to our next community person. Um, wow, that's a long one. Why don't you read this one, Dan? 
Alright, so we have a response from Stephanie Tan and she says, I guess fan-made stuff does make it all the more interesting as it gives endless creative extension to the character besides just what we see from the hub or rather the actual show and I guess I can add the comic as well. Though I wouldn't say the bad stuff really has much negativity as the good one does, as fanfics like Cupcakes emerge, it didn't stop anyone from disliking Pinky. In fact, it increased her popularity even more as people started liking the dark side of her. One thing about how people react to things they love, no matter how bad, they easily forget and they never take it seriously. Okay, this is some contrast. It's like characters, they repel negativity. Like for a while, Dashi was quite portrayed like a boo! Not just from the fans, but how the original storyboard portrayed her. But it's obvious season 3, they tried to change that, but either way, it didn't stop anyone from liking Dashi. And as uh, Norman said, Loon, Gamer Luna does attract people. Hey, who isn't interested in a cool gamer girl? What more a beautiful princess? Luna doesn't get much airtime, and she did get what she deserves through fan-made content, allowing us to get to know more of her, her personality, even though it may or may not be what she really is. But it's still more content for us, and the more interest poured out to poor neglected characters. But either way, yes, it makes a difference, but negative impact is almost none, though we absorb the good parts like water into cotton candy. But thank you very much, Stephanie, for this input. I have to say, um, I agree. Um, what what we were taking too long to explain our uh, feelings and um, you sum it up really good. <laughs> yep. Still takes three paragraphs, but it still works. Yay. Yes, indeed. And um, we have one from Dust Shine Elsman. Well, since cupcakes, um, sorry, why is every pony referring to cupcakes? <laughs> um, okay. I don't know why. I guess it's the most famous, but yeah, it's, it's still a valid reason, but uh, you know, yeah. cupcakes isn't the only fanfic out there, guys. I mean, we understand that you know it may be the only fanfic you know, but of course, go on to film fiction and read some more fanfics. Seriously, Cupcakes isn't the only fanfic. I'm not done yet, you know. <laughs> oh, sorry. <sighs> anyway, um, I like to avoid gore and clock fics. It does sometimes change my perception of a certain character. I'm also avoiding to read anything on Rainbow Factory. <laughs> <laughs> That's my opinion. I don't hate anyone who likes him. <laughs> That's why there's a big red sign outside the Rainbow Factory saying no entry. <laughs> Norman follows the rules. I, I, I don't know. But no, seriously, um, about Rainbow Factory and all those fix, I refer to Flim Flam Philosophy. He's the guy that did Rainbow Dash Presents. That crazy animation, not really the an animation. Desensitization. Of yeah, the desensitization effects. of the... Crazy fix. Yep. Yeah, and his logic about certain characters, example, um, Rainbow Dash in Cupcakes, because his perception when he described um, the story behind Cupcakes is okay. Rainbow Dash, if Rainbow Dash was in that kind of situation, I don't think it will be that way. And Pinkie Pie in the basement would, and during a work hour, wouldn't Mrs. Cake <laughs> this call? I mean, wouldn't Mrs. Cake call her out saying, "Why are you manning the register?" And it's kind of funny. She took leave. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, but still, I get where you're coming from. <laughs> Even Rainbow Factory, like if you know the story behind Rainbow Factory, um, why did uh, Rainbow Dash took um the job in the first place? <laughs> Like, it's totally not her characteristic to do something like that. Yeah, I mean, if you read the fanfic, you'll know why, but yeah. Yeah, and like... <laughs> they did justify it, yeah, but... Yeah, yeah. but, but Flim Flam Philosophy did even a better job. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think it's the natural tendency for the human mind to want to do something like that. Like, we, we have a tendency to add meaning to things that we don't know about. Well, I think we had a pretty good discussion. A bit too long for my liking, I guess. Oh well, at least it's full of stuff. So yeah. Yes, indeed. And I might do have. I, I might edit some out just because it's a bit too long. <laughs> well, so just about just to wrap things up, you know, I think uh, we can just boil this back to one last thing. Remember, a few episodes ago, we had one with um, Five Iron, if I'm not mistaken, and uh, we talked about something that we could how we relate to ponies that we like very much, and I said. It could be either that you're working, you like a pony because it's the kind of character that you want to be, or it's a kind of character that you like to see in a companion or a friend or a partner, in a sense True. like that. So for things like, you know, I like Pinkie Pie. 
So basically, it's because I want to be like Pinkie Pie. I want to be someone who brings happiness around, though I'm a grumpy person. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, you know, true. I want to be like that. That's kind of like the optimum characteristic. So, you know, anything that is in line with Pinky becoming like that will make me happy. That's why I didn't like Cupcakes because that didn't portray Pinky being the pony that brings happiness around. True, true. But I, I think that's a different kind of discussion because you like Pinky Pie because she's an optimistic character. That's based on the show. Like, what I'm saying is a fan base. Like, why do we like... Um, example, why do we like Doctor Who's? Or Time Turner, as he's officially known by named by Hasbro. Yeah, so, but uh, see, the meaning, the reason I did this is because people will pick what they want, and I learned this even in university. They have a topic about you know how fans work, and people will pick what they like from a fan base. They won't absorb everything. So you know, let's just say you're a big fan of Dashi or a big fan of Scootaloo, you won't read Rainbow Factory. You read Rainbow Factory, but you're like, no, 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 that's not Rainbow Dash. You know, you'll be reading Cupcakes. No, 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 that's not Pinkie Pie. Rainbow Dash didn't die. You know, mm. you'll be like that. You'll reject the reality that you don't want. Mm, but you'll okay. pick things from the fandom that you like. So what you like actually pretty much still dictates a lot, a lot, a lot of this stuff. Okay, so basically what you're saying is you you will like what you like and you will reject what you don't like. Pretty much, yes. And regard, and it still shows that there is some influence of, a fan, of a fan content, but ultimately, it's a lot of it is just you. Okay, true, true, true enough. Or in a nutshell, what Stephanie Tan said, it all makes pretty pretty good sense. Yep. I I think I'll paste it in the show docs. It's a really good read. Definitely. So anyway, um, give me a second. Um, Okay, so anyway, that was topic time. And moving on to our next topic is shoutouts. Shoutouts. Why why do I love and hate you at the same time? So anyway, my shout out for this week goes to you, Daniel. Thank you for being on the show. Uh, I miss you too, Norman. Thank you for having me on. I miss being here. It's just been so busy, so packed the last few weeks. All right, school is cool. I mean, you have a life. I know. I don't have a life either. <laughs> so anyway, my only shout out goes to Daniel. And Thank you. well, let's see who I can. Alien bonus. Uh, I don't think so, anyone else. <laughs> I, I'm a bit blurred out. So, um, my only shout-out goes to you, Daniel. <laughs> Alright, yep. And uh, my shout-out goes out to a lot of other people, and uh, especially <laughs> if any of you have heard the New Year's Eve special of the Lines podcast, my podcast that I run for Taylor's University. I did a lot of shout-outs there, so I'm going to do it here as well. For inspiring, you know, for inspiring my podcast to continue running, even though it's been hit by a lot of hard times. i like to shout-out to Apple Cider and Chef Sandy of Bronyville, I'd like to shout out to Fire Iron and Alpha of Brody Time. I'd like to shout out to Ethan Powell of Alicorn Radio and to you, Norman Sanzo, for the MBS show as well. All of you have shared so much knowledge with me through podcasting and learning how to, you know... I mean, I started podcasting before I joined the MBS show, but I wouldn't be able to do what I do today with my own podcast if it wasn't for this show. And, of course, all the other shows that we have worked with, I've learned so much from everyone else. So anyway, oh my, look at the time. What do you know? It's 12 o'clock and it's January the 6th. And you know what that means? Yeah, I'm officially an adult. Yay, happy birthday, Daniel. You're Thank 21. You, Welcome yep. to the adult life. Now go get to work. <laughs> You're the first to wish me. Yay, I get my first wish from my boss. <laughs> Yay. It's an awesome 21st. Thank you so much. And... um Shout out in advance to people who wish me, yeah? <laughs> Yay. Well, this episode time. is going to come out a bit late, so... That's happy, right, happy early, happy belated. Where <laughs> I have this policy where it's never too late to wish me. Huh. If that's the case, I shall wish you near next year for... <laughs> you can wish me for my 22nd, you know. <laughs> That'll be early. <laughs> or late. <laughs> yeah, but still, I know it's always the thought that counts, and... One time I had this friend who was on Twitter who was ranting like, Hey, you want to wish me happy birthday? Wish me properly or don't wish me at all. I'm like, fine. Well. <laughs> I, 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 I take it from anyone and I believe it's the thought that counts. So, yep. Thank you very much, Norman. Yeah, you're welcome. So I anyway. celebrated my 21st birthday on the MBS show, Achievement Unlocked. Yay. But you get absolutely nothing. <laughs> Satisfaction. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, um, congratulations, <laughs> congratulations on turning 21. Um, yeah, you. now, now you're legal in most states. I'm legal in all states in Malaysia. Oh, really now? <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. But I'm not legal in the states just yet, so... <clears throat> I think you already are. 
No, I'm not. I'm not twenty. I'm not twenty one in the states yet. <laughs> <laughs> when this episode comes out, you're already legal. <laughs> if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at the MBS Show at gmail.com. You can also reach us on Twitter. Our show's Twitter account is at the MBS Show, and I'm at Norman Sanzo. I'm at Saint Pinky S T P I N K I E. And also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes. And also, like our Facebook page. We need another 100. And yeah. links will be provided below. And stay tuned to our Facebook page for announcements on our first anniversary party. You can do this by going to the Facebook page. <laughs> click on the link below. Yeah, we know you've already liked it. But go and click on the link and press subscribe so you get notifications when we post up new things. And you'll get notifications on our new episodes as well. Yes, indeed. So, I've been Norman Sanzo. I've been Daniel Anthony, just turning 21. And we'll see you next week with a guest, I hope. <laughs> yep. All right, then. See ya. Bye, guys. Taking my time, thinking it over, wondering how I can repay. Saving my life, how can I show her all my gratitude? What would Twilight say? And every time I think of leaving her I feel like I am letting her down So I guess I'll stick around her for a while Just a little while, yeah Just a while Well Understands how I can be her man, how she could be the one to lean on me. But if she let me try, you know, I could show her why. You know, I would come through and I'd make her see that every time I think of leaving her, my spirit takes a nose dive. So I guess I'll stick around her for a while. friends yesterday night we went out for dinner and then we started playing uncharted at a friend's place and um this guy just couldn't clear a level he was continuing just going in and i kept dying and people started shooting him and i was getting so bored looking at him do that and i was like you know what i'm gonna give a backstory on every person he shoots <laughs> now i'm gonna be like this dude worked in pakistan and he lost his job two months ago then he worked in the post office last week and then he got, he got, he got fired then they gave him a gun and said come join the army and I stuff like that and I kept doing it all night and basically added flavor to that game that he was killing <laughs> but I'd say it's really a human tendency especially if you're a fanfic writer or if you discover you can do this it means you have probably got a knack for fanfics <laughs> you okay dude about that one guy your friend shot down who has a family <laughs> <laughs> it's just one
working the security shift. Like, just on my work day, and suddenly Nathan Drake came in and shot everybody. <laughs> And then just went to the report hole. <laughs> like, so, I was just so pissed off. He's like, no, give me another chance. I can clear this level. I can do it. I can do it. Like, yeah, get on. <laughs> <laughs> like, do that, do that he never seen a laser before. They attached one to his sniper, so he's having fun with it. He likes your head. <laughs> <laughs> that dude down there is a Taylor's dropout. <laughs> Oh, let's move on. You broke me. <laughs> you, you broke me. <laughs> I, I was, I mean, seriously, this is what I did last time. I was really losing it. Sorry. <laughs> That's interesting. Anyway. Um, oh, we can composure. We can composure. <laughs> okay. Wait, we let it all out. <laughs>